Let's talk about Roswell. You, you say that data from Roswell could literally change our place in the universe, but that you want to see this data. What exactly would you be looking for? Well, um, we have conflicting reports from government, as you mentioned. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we had a testimony at the U.S. Congress under oath by David Grush, who says there are programs for retrieval and reverse engineering of uh, extraterrestrial craft in crash sites. On the other hand, you have the former director of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office in the Pentagon saying that they had access to all the information and there is nothing there other than things that they can understand as human made. And the question is, who is telling us uh, the full story? Uh, we can wait for the government to tell us the full information it has. Uh, we, we might wait forever for that. Uh, instead, uh, we know that the sky is not classified, the oceans are not classified. So we could retrieve new information ourselves. And that's my uh, interest these days as a scientist. I understand. And I also want to get your take on this recent uh, research paper questioning if aliens are already walking among us. Uh, the 42 page paper by three researchers, two of whom are from Harvard, urging the scientific community to seriously consider the idea that aliens may already be present on Earth. Crypto terrestrials, they talk about, and specifically the possibilities that UFOs could be concealed, that aliens could already be underground. And it points to sightings clustered around lakes and volcanoes which they theorize need to be investigated as potential entry or exit points. Now, this, this really blows one's mind. Uh, what do you make of this? Well, there are many possibilities, and the key is to collect evidence that will rule out some possibilities and rule in others. Uh, you know, science fiction is based on possibilities that other humans imagined, but it doesn't uh, bring us closer to knowing what whether we have a partner. And you know, this is the most romantic question in science. Is there someone out there? Um, are we alone or should we look for someone out there? And the best way to find the answer to this romantic question is by collecting evidence. And this paper that you mentioned does not provide any new evidence. The Galileo project that I'm leading uh, operates already one observatory watching the entire sky 24 seven looking for unusual objects. We're building two additional observatories. Um, all three of them will operate uh, in tandem within the coming year. We have looked at uh, half a million objects so far. We haven't seen anything anomalous, but we are searching. And, you know, uh, the advice you give to anyone that feels lonely, anyone that claims, where is everybody, like uh, Enrico Fermi asked, is, you know, you should be proactive. You should search for a partner. Uh, you are not that attractive that everyone will come to you. You have to search for them. And uh, that's the approach that we are taking within the Galileo project. Mm. And hopefully within a year or two, we, we will have something. Yeah, I appreciate that. Looking for the hard data to answer such a romantic question. Um, what is your response to the Pentagon's March report saying that there is no evidence of UFOs and that people simply misinterpreted what they heard or saw? Well, I think um, uh, they uh, argue that 97% of the events that they looked into from the past can be explained. But it's really about the one out of a million events, because we know there is a lot of a lot of things going in the sky that are human made or natural. And, uh, you know, they just don't they are unable to visit past events and, and figure out what happened. So I think, you know, it's one way for them to basically argue that, you know, they're doing their job uh, for national security purposes. That's their day job. My day job as a scientist is to figure out what lies outside the solar system. And that's not part of national security. It's part of science. Understood. And I do want to ask the latest uh, in your research. I know you recovered these small magnetic spherules uh, from the Pacific Ocean, and you believe they came from a watermelon sized object that collided with Earth uh, in 2014, potentially a piece of alien built technology. There have been critics saying this is coal ash. You are testing it. What are you finding now? We found that it's definitely not coal ash based on 55 elements from the periodic table that we compared 
to the composition of coal ash. We also figured that um, the composition is different from solar system materials. So it's very likely that we found material from outside the solar system, but we didn't find big pieces as of yet. The material we found was tiny droplets, uh, less than a millimeter in size. And so we hope to go again to the same site, this time with a robot that we will put uh, on the ocean floor, a, a, a remotely operated vehicle that will give us a video feed. And if we do find bigger pieces, and by the way, that uh, mission will cost us six and a half million dollars. We are seeking a potential funder uh, for that mission as of now. Uh, then, uh, you know, we could tell easily whether it was natural, a rock or some artificial gadget. Uh, if we find the core of it, it may have buttons on it. And the question would be, should we press a button? Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.